Uh, as I told that creating a virtual service heavily depends on how well you understand the specification of kind of service that you're going to virtualize. If I don't know what a REST API is, creating the request tab and then adding the response to it or mapping it with the response will be definitely a difficult task. I need to know the REST is over HTTP. So header and other things need to be configured there as well. So let's go and see what activities we will be doing specifically when it comes to configuration. So what actually is configured? That's something which is we need to ask. And as I told you for different services, there will be different. But generic is we will be creating requests or configuring request, configure response. We will also do dispatch, then authentication. Then you will also configure behavior. You will configure coverage. You can also go ahead with SSL configuration, I'll say. And finally, scripts and events. So what is configured? You configure request, you configure response, you configure dispatch settings, you configure authentication, you configure behavior, you configure coverage, SSL config and scripts and events. We'll take one by one each one of them. Now let's start. So first, what I'll do, I'll create an empty virtual service. So I'll go to project two or any project. Click on plus. I'll come to empty rest. Click on OK. I'll give it a name. For example, I'm giving it a name as sample service. Click OK. Now, immediately it creates a virtual server. It is creating a virtual server. Now, if you go and relate it with your wire mock server, we create their server by using wire mock server, server equal to new wire mock server, and we pass 999 as port. All that we are not required to do, everything is UI based. Now, if you explore this, you will find setup, behavior, data source, auth. So, what I have written here is the configuration of those elements only. What elements? Configuring. Elements like request, response, dispatch, authentication, behavior, coverage, SSL, script, and events. It's the same thing which is there here. You see behavior, auth, data source, and here if you see assertions, script, all these are there here. So you will have place in your UI to configure all these elements. Then you have route options. If you see route to, route non-virtualized request, route and record non-virtualized request. What is non-virtualized request? It's an actual request. So just explore this particular UI. You have here a virtual service that you are planning to create. You have created a virtual service. First step, it creates your server, gives you an URL that is endpoint. Fine. Now, how do we create request? So we'll go and we'll create request. And request is something which indicates the operations. And operations will make the behavior of the real service. That's what is the intent. So what actually we will be doing, we will just go and click on action. And here you will select the method. All these are rest methods. So let me select get resource path, get by city, something I wrote. I can click on this and I'll immediately get help also. So you can take the help. All these are there, step by step, everything is there. You can explore that in case if you wish to, but for now, I'm just trying to simplify it for you by putting the right context. Click on OK. So now I have created a request. This is what get is the method and URL pattern or URI is get by city. So complete URL will be what? HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 8081 slash get by city. HTTP method type that we are using here is get. This is about a REST service. Now let me go and add one more service here. I'll click on this. And now this time what I'm doing, I'm taking, let me go ahead and take an empty GMS. Click on OK. Click on OK. So you see, I have here GMS service. Now in this case, you will have to create queue and topic. So it has to be configured properly. So I'll go and I'll delete this for now. I'll take GMS route later. I'll create a soap. I want to show you something. I'll create on this. I'll take empty soap. Click on OK. I'll say sample SOAP service. Click on OK. Now you see 
it's not action it has changed to what operation so if i was here it is action but and i'm creating a soap service it's operation for jms it will not be operation it will not be action it will be jms route so depending on type of service that you are going to create you can go ahead and you can add for example now i'll click here no unique operation in the project that's fine but this is how depending on the need you can go and you can define i have to get the operation here import virtual operation is what we have to do i'll take it up later but this is something that you need to be aware of that see it's not that you will get similar kind of ui your rest ready api is smart enough to delegate right options on the ui depending on type of service that you are creating this is how you can go and you can create your service and you can add requests to it here you see when i go and create new virtual service I have all the options available. So now we have sample service for which we have a request. Dispatch type, random, query match, XPath, script, parameter. Now you need to be aware about this. So let me not specify this as of now. I'll keep sequence. But concept of this is important, but I wanted to quickly jump on to create response so that we can work with that. Now what to do? Options are there in front of you. You have here a request incoming. Now you have to just tell the outcome. I'll just go here and I will specify response name as response for get by city. It is giving a name so that it's easy. So you have added here the response. I'll click on edit. I can edit this. So after adding a response, now you have to specify the content of it. And you do this in the editor itself. I'll just go here. If you see, this is response. And here you have edit. What is the HTTP status code? What is the content type? And this is the editor where actually you can go and you can write your content type. For example, I can go and I can write here. If it is JSON, you have to be in JSON format. I'll just take this the response data here you have data response and status code is this header if you want to add you can add whatever header you want for example i'll say version i'll say 1.0 so i have added a header now data source you can specify you haven't created any data source so it will not be available here so this is how you can go and you can create custom headers as well. So now this is all done. I'll click on save. I can save this project. This is what is the endpoint. I'll click on run. So now it is ready to be tested. Now where you will test in the application, you will be using this in your application to test it. Fine, so this is how you can go ahead and you can create request and response. Same if you want to set the protocol to HTTPS, you see you have here HTTPS. The minute I changed here, it's HTTP, HTTPS. So full service control will be there here. Auto start server, you can specify path, you can specify then assertions, you can specify a brief description, you can give start script. If you have, you can specify. Now there is a specific way of writing script. All these are there on request, after request, what you want to log, you can specify it in form of script as well. So this is how you will be adding request and response to your services. But before you move further, I left one important thing here that is dispatch style. Now, if you see, you have different responses for operations that actually you can specify for your virtual service. And mapping is what you have to do. So if you are selecting here, for example, I can add many response I can add here for a request. I can add. So now I need to specify that how actually your virtual service will return the right response. We have to set one operation that specifies which response the virtual service returns in a particular case. And that's where your dispatch style comes in play. So if I'm adding more responses here, if I have selected sequence, 
and whoever is testing their code where this virtual service is required, they will get responses in a sequence. So if you have three response, which you have added, and if this get by city is made call three times, it will be in a sequence. Apart from that, your dispatch style can be random. So when I say random, it means that any response can be selective as a result of this. That's what is meaning of random. Then you have the third one, query match. Now, if you see query match, query match means it will select a response based on data of incoming request. That's what is objective of query match. It is nothing but it is path parallel. That's what is meaning of query. How do we set it? That is something which we need to be aware of. So for example, here at the right hand side, you have dispatch strategy. Since we selected here query match in the editor, it has selected query match. Now what we need to do is we need to create a match for which I will select a response that will be default response. If no match is found, if you have multiple response, let me create some more responses. I'm just creating some more. So now I have two responses. I'll go here. Query match. Default response, you can change. I'm selecting this. Click on plus. Specify a name for the match. So I have to specify here a name that actually I want to be specified or to be used by the match. So I'll say Delhi. You can go and you can specify now X path. You can specify expected value. Because we are using XML, we can go and we can use X path and we can specify here some query, say expected value, whatever you want to give expected value and then finally dispatch to. So for every response, you can go and you can set the policy using dispatch type. That's what is objective of query match. If I change to X path, it selects a response by retrieving data from incoming request XPath expression. So depending on the URI, your XPath expression will execute, it will find the value and it will use it. So there are different ways. Now for this, you need to know XPath properly or a script. Now you see, this is what is the script that you can write. If contains, so you can go and you can make it more dynamic by writing your script. Apart from that parameter, this is the parameter. I say query parameter as Mumbai equal to Mumbai, then send this response. Now here, if you see it is query path header, query is question mark, I'll say path. So if I'm saying path, it means HTTP localhost colon 8081 get by city slash Mumbai. If it is equal to this, it will make call to this. So depending on your need, you can go and you can configure the way you want your responses to behave. 